So hi everyone, my name is Phidias Diamandis. I'm a scientist and neuropathologist at the University Health Network in Toronto. And today we're gonna to be talking about COVID-19, the research edition. We're gonna be going over three pros and three cons that this virus has, has had on our, um, on our life and our livelihood. And um, we're, going to be we're going to be beginning with the um, three cons so we can end on a positive note with the, uh, the positive effects uh, that we've uh, noticed this past week. So um, for those of you who don't know, um, research institutes around the world have shut down. And as a result, um, our, our vital research um, uh, has been put on uh, hold. Um, our lab specifically uh, studies uh, a deadly brain tumor known as glioblastoma in hopes of finding new therapies that can help these patients. And thus, um, the first negative impact um, of this virus on our work um, uh, has really been um, uh, slowing down uh, progress um, uh, during the stoppage uh, that could be helping uh, uh, patients in need. I want to say to the uh, patients, to the public that's funding our research, do not worry. Um, as scientists, we're finding creative ways to uh, stay productive uh, during this stoppage. And uh, you, uh, you have my assurance that both our labs and, and, and labs uh, uh, really around the world are really motivated to uh, come back stronger uh, and more efficient uh, to make the impact that we hope to do through our research. Number two. Number two, the, the second negative impact this disease has had on our livelihood has really been uh, um, the isolation it's caused. One of the key things that I do as a scientist is mentor um, uh, trainees. Um, some of them will go on to become scientists, hopefully, uh, but the ones that don't uh, are also um, going to make an important contribution in society using the skills that they learned uh, through our mentorship problem solving skills, the ability to design a uh, appropriate uh, experiment um, and, and really um, uh, finding solutions to problems. And um, our inability to uh, provide mentorship to those students in the traditional way of interacting on a day-to-day -day basis uh, face to face um, does raise some concerns uh, if, if we can provide the mentorship that these uh, trainees need to become productive members of, uh, of our society, regardless of what they end up uh, choosing to do. <music> Lastly, um, um, one of the negative things that I've noticed uh, this past week is the, um, um, is the, the lack of um, the organic uh, interactions we have with scientists uh, uh, in our neighboring labs uh, while, while going down the elevator uh, to grab a coffee. Those are some of the most important um, conversations that we have because they're unexpected and we may get the unique insight into some of our research and some of the difficulties that we're experiencing in our lab uh, through these suggestions by our colleagues. So those uh, organic interactions have been thoroughly uh, missed even though we have uh, uh, other solutions to interact uh, for the formal meetings that we uh, have on a day-to-day -day basis. Moving on, uh, let's talk about some of the pros um, to end on a kind of a high note. Um, uh, perhaps the, um, uh, the, the, the biggest pro has really been the uh, necessity to adopt technologies to remain productive. Um, so the, um, the, some of the key ones that we're adopting and experimenting with have been uh, Zoom uh, for video conferencing. Uh, it, seems, uh, it seems like the whole world is adopting uh, this technology. Um, uh, this morning, I, I listened to a, a church sermon uh, using uh, this, this technology, and uh, later this week, um, we're going to be hosting our, our child's uh, first birthday uh, using Zoom. So it's uh, it's really interesting to see uh, uh, how this has really been so widely adopted for many of the kind of social interactions that we've had. So uh, I'm really excited about uh, to see how Zoom uh, Zoom's effect is on the long uh, in the long term. Uh, if it's something that uh, uh, we keep, or if it's something that's transient to this uh, uh, to to this scenario that we're in, um, luckily, um, uh, 
one of the key aspects of our lab is uh, doing uh, computational work. Uh, we use uh, deep learning to study uh, medical images and that's been something that uh, I'm really happy that we do because uh, we've been able to continue doing it uh, in the cloud and remotely um, in a kind of very safe manner. So uh, what I urge trainees listening to this video, uh, if you have mostly a wet lab project, really consider this an opportunity to develop some um, uh, computational skills, learn how to code and analyze publicly available data um, to really strengthen the, the specific scientific question uh, that you're studying in the lab because I think uh, uh, there's so much data out there that could uh, uh, help accelerate uh, discoveries and, and cures for patients. Um, lastly, a sh shameless plug, as you know, we have a YouTube channel devoted to uh, online education. It's free, it, it's accessible, so please feel free to use our resource and other resources to continue to learn and educate yourself uh, during this uh, self-isolation. Um, um, the second pro um, that I want to mention is isolation. I know that's usually seen as a negative, uh, but um, I think um, when we think of isolation, it also provides us a unique opportunity to uh, self-reflect about our lives. How can we optimize them and improve them? Uh, whether it be uh, taking on a specific new talent, um, spending time to read about uh, uh, your scientific project, um, or just in general becoming a better uh, human by improving your org organizational skills, developing good habits, uh, this is really the time to do it. Um, isolation uh, it can be used in a positive way to help you grow. So I think um, that's really been something that I've, I've really used to um, self-reflect how uh, I can be a better supervisor and a more efficient researcher um, uh, when we are up and running again. Uh, lastly, on uh, lastly, on a personal note, um, working from home has its pros and cons. I have a little guy at home, uh, about 11 months, and it's been hard to balance um, some of the uh, productivity while also making sure that he's safe um, as, uh, as I've been uh, taking care of him while, while I've been uh, um, working remotely. Uh, but one of the nice things uh, that I got to see on Friday uh, was his first step. So um, 9.32 a.m. on Friday, uh, my, my son took his first steps and uh, usually that would be a time where I'm at work. Uh, but uh, being home, uh, even though it's been difficult to uh, balance, uh, I can I can't put the price on that. I can't I can't uh, I can't imagine. Uh, I never thought I was going to see my son's first steps due to our um, uh, bu busy work schedule. So uh, being able to stay home, I think uh, um, it's a, it's a very very uh, fortunate uh, thing um, for me. And uh, whether you have uh, young ones at home, uh, elderly, this is really a, a unique time to uh, bond with them. Um, in a way that perhaps is not possible uh, with our regular uh, busy lifestyles. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what week two has in store. I want to end this message by um, saying a few thank yous. Thank you to all the healthcare workers. Thank you to all the um, uh, vital um, uh, staff that are really helping um, our, our society continue to move forward, uh, janitorial staff, healthcare workers, people that keep pharmacies open, gas stations, really um, grocery stores. Without you, I think this would be much more difficult. So um, you guys are the real heroes in this uh, crisis. Uh, please stay safe. And for everyone else, um, uh, it's time for us to do our part. Keep washing your hands. Uh, keep practicing social distancing so we can not only keep um, the vulnerable people in our society safe, but also these heroes uh, that are really helping us uh, through these difficult times. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that and catch you at the next one.